Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Saturday. Today is Saturday, February 11th, uh, and it is good to start the day off with all of you. Um, I pray yesterday was a blessed day for you and glad to be able to join you this morning. Uh, today we're going to be, oh, that was Give Me Jesus, <laughs> Cassandra Kellum from Mark Miller and the New Haven Collective. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and uh, today we are looking at Colossians 3, uh, specifically 3 verse 17. And our devotion is entitled, Depend on Jesus, Depend on Jesus. But let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Michelle and Janet. Welcome. Uh, my Saturday crew is always a little lighter, so I'm glad you were able to be with us, Michelle and Janet. Praying for both of you this morning. And good morning, Donna and Barbara. It's good to have you both here. Praying for you this morning. Good morning, Esther and Sue. I'm glad you're both here today. Praying for you as we start this day. And Augusta and Celia, I'm glad you're both here praying for you and giving thanks uh, on this, your birthday, Celia, giving thanks to God for you. You are a blessing. And uh, so we celebrate with you and for you this day. And good morning, Genevieve and Susan. I'm glad you're both here praying for you uh, as we begin this day. And I think that's it for today. Um, good to be with all of you today. As I've mentioned earlier, we're looking at Colossians 3. So if you want to turn in your Bibles, uh, I think I might start in 15. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. So as you're opening your Bibles to um, that part of scripture. Uh, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And um, if you'd like to join us for worship tomorrow in person, we are, our location, our church building location is on the corner of George and Liberty Street, right in the center of uh, New Brunswick. We'd love to have you with us in worship. You can always also join us online. Um, so let's jump into Colossians 3, beginning in verse 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Our devotion today is entitled, Depend on Jesus, Depend on Jesus. According to John 15, one through eight, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. He tells us that as we abide in him, we will bear much good fruit and that apart from him, we can do nothing. We should read and meditate on these verses often because we have a tendency as human beings to be independent and self-reliant. As you begin any project or task, take a moment to tell Jesus that you are depending entirely on him for grace, wisdom, and strength to do it. This ensures that you will do it with his help rather than laboring futilely in your own strength and abilities. Any burden is lighter when it is borne by two instead of one. Therefore, I urge you to ask for and 
receive all the help you can from God who never grows weary. After having successfully completed your task, remember to thank God for God's help. So I thank you for all your prayers this past week. Um, it was a long week, but of course it was, it was a blessing. Uh, there were several of our candidates that were moved on for commissioning, and that was a real blessing. But I want to share with you the story of uh, someone that, that I've had the blessing to walk with. And uh, the, right before the retreat started, um, I sent a message uh, via phone to just say, you know, I'm praying for you you know, for wisdom and strength and courage to speak your voice. And then I added this one little line, which was not my words, because uh, normally I would never have spoken this way, although I should have, and I, and I will in the future. But I, I added the words in the midst of this holy retreat. Those were the words I used in the midst of this holy retreat. Well, this was exactly what this person needed to hear. And he latched onto it and it changed his perspective because what was a test and a, a challenge, something that had to be conquered through his wisdom that he had gained, uh, something that was uh, evaluating him uh, became a holy place, a holy retreat infused with the Holy Spirit and God's holy presence. And that shifted everything for him. Uh, and I realized, yes, it was holy. Now there were other people who didn't feel that it was a holy retreat. <laughs> um, and nothing was really very different, nothing in terms of our process for them than than for this other person, but it was in his willingness to see God, God's holiness in the midst of every interview that he went into, in the midst of our time of worship, in the midst of our prayer time, in the midst of the waiting for an answer. And I've thought about how often do we look at the things that we are entering into as holy places? Of course, we think about church, worship, as entering into holy space, holy ground. But, but what if we began to see all of our places when we work, enter into our workspace or or we enter into a family gathering, or we're doing work on the streets of New Brunswick, whatever it is, can we see that as an opportunity for God's holiness to be in the midst of showing us, leading us, helping us to see something new, see God's presence? I'm telling you, it will make, just like it did for this young man, it will make all the difference. So where are the holy places that you will dwell this day? Where are the holy places that you will dwell this day? As we move into a time of prayer, I lift up you, all of you. I lift up all of the places that you will go today, the people that you will see uh, the, the, the workplaces, the home places, the street places, all of those spaces, that they may be opportunities for you in, to encounter the holiness of God. Let us pray. God, we come before you today with grateful hearts. Grateful for life, 
grateful for our life in you. Lord, we lift up Celia. She celebrates a birthday. And we give thanks for the gift of life. For the, the life um, that, that floods in and through us. Your life. Your breath your very presence, your spirit working in and through us. Forgive us, Lord, when we try to put you in boxes and claim that your holiness only dwells in certain places when we know better. Lead us this day so that every space we come into will be an opportunity to encounter you, to abide in your holy presence, to see what it is that you need us to see, that your very presence might illuminate all of the things that we need to do and say will lead us to the places we need to be, will comfort us when we need to be comforted will uh, nudge us on when we need to move to new places. Surround us with your holy presence this day in all that we say and all that we do so that we might encounter you uh, this day. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So praying for you this day uh, that every space that you will be reminded you are standing on holy ground, that this is holy space. And I want to invite you tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to be preaching a little shift. We're out of, uh, out of uh, the series that we were in. So I'm going to be preaching on Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 and the importance of relationships and asking the question, this is off of a wonderful sermon that a friend of mine uh, shared. Who are the people that know your name? Who are the people that know your name? Uh, so I hope that you can join us, uh, whether you are in person or uh, online. I hope you can join us uh, in worship tomorrow at 11. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow at 11. Bye, friends.